Hi guys, welcome to my first Test Tuesday video. This particular video is on psychiatry and in this video I will be working through five exam focused MCQs. After each MCQ I will pause for about 20 seconds but if you need a bit extra please feel free to pause the video. It's entirely up to you. And I would really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. As I am a full-time doctor as well as a content creator, this, these subscriptions really go uh, a long way in terms of improving the output of my channel. So I really do value your subscriptions. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, the patient is a 16 year old student who presents to the GP with his mum and he has recurrent thoughts of hurting the family's dog. Now the patient is very close to his pet and these thoughts are causing him a lot of distress. He recognises these thoughts as his own and sometimes tries to stop them by making the sign of the cross on his hand. Which of these features is not consistent with the underlying diagnosis? So we have A, equal incidence in males and females. B, fluoxetine is an effective treatment. C, insight is preserved. D. Symptoms must be present for one month prior to diagnosis. Or E. Thoughts are repetitive. And I'll give you 20 seconds to think about it. Okay, so the answer here is D. So the patient in this question has obsessive compulsive disorder. And this can be predominantly obsessive thoughts. In this case, the patient has thoughts of hurting the family's dog. Or obsessive compulsive disorder could be predominantly compulsive acts such as making the sign of the cross on the hand, as seen in this example. Or it can be mixed obsessional thoughts and acts, as we can see in this case. And it is important for your exams to be able to define an obsessional thought. And an obsessional thought is defined as being distressing to the patient and senseless. Patients often describe their own thoughts as silly or senseless, but they still cause them a lot of distress and they cannot be successfully resisted. And this is important to know that they can't be successfully resisted because a lot of the time the patients want these obsessional thoughts to stop, but they can't stop them. And this adds a lot to the distress of the patient. So option A here is incorrect because both males and females are equally affected by OCD. And option C is incorrect as patients with OCD will have insight into their condition. And in OCD, it's important to know a bit about compulsive acts. So a compulsive act it's not enjoyable or useful to the patient, but reduces their anxiety. So in this case, the patient making a cross on their hand might relieve some anxiety for the patient. And the treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder includes cognitive behavioural therapy and drug therapy such as SSRIs. And a common SSRI used is fluoxetine. And for OCD to be diagnosed, it needs to be present most days for two weeks. So therefore, the answer D is not consistent with the underlying diagnosis. 
So the correct answer here is D because it's not consistent with the underlying diagnosis. So symptoms must be present for two weeks, not one month prior to diagnosis. Now moving on to question two. So question two concerns a 28 year old man who reports that other people are listening into his thoughts and he also reports a voice that talks about what he is doing. From the age 20 to 24 he has regularly used cannabis but denies recent drug use. During the consultation the clinic phone rings and the patient says the phone is ringing which means I am the chosen one. What is the most likely diagnosis? So the options are A. Acute psychiatric disorder B. Drug induced psychosis C. Paranoid schizophrenia D. Persistent delusional disorder or E. Schizoaffective disorder And again I will pause for about 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, so the answer here is C. So this patient has paranoid schizophrenia. And this is a really common question. And most students will be able to recognize that the patient is psychotic but may have difficulty in the exam identifying what is the psychotic disorder. So I think this is a really useful question to include in this video. So let's go through schizophrenia. Well, it is the most common psychotic disorder. And we can identify schizophrenia by looking for first rank symptoms or features. And these are strongly suggestive of schizophrenia. So if you see these in the question, you should be thinking of schizophrenia. And they include delusional perception. So this is when a patient attributes a false meaning to a real perception. In this case, the phone did ring during the clinic, but the patient had the delusional perception that by the phone ringing, it meant he was the chosen one. And delusional perception is very consistent with schizophrenia. This patient also shows other first rank features of schizophrenia, such as thought disorder. And this can take the form of thought insertion, thought withdrawal, or thought broadcast. And this gentleman feels his thoughts are being broadcast to other people. He also has hears a voice. And what he is experiencing here is third person auditory hallucination. Another key feature of schizophrenia. But for schizophrenia to be present, these symptoms must be present for one month. Now, he has been experiencing ongoing um, problems. So, this is in keeping with paranoid schizophrenia. So, it's very important to, play, to pay a close eye to the time frames in the MCQ questions so you don't ca get caught out. An acute psychiatric disorder would be present for a shorter time frame than a month. Since this gentleman has not done drugs in many years, it is unlikely to be drug related. And for a delusional disorder to be present, symptoms must be present for greater than three months. So that rules that disorder out. And schizoaffective disorder is another differential for schizophrenia, but it is characterized by symptoms of depression and schizophrenia in the same episode of illness. 
So in this question, there's no mention of low mood, low energy, or other symptoms of depression. And therefore, this is an incorrect option. Now let's move on to question three. A 46-year-old woman reports a belief that another man has taken over her husband's body. Which of the following is the best description of what the patient is experiencing? A. Capgras syndrome. B. Frigoli syndrome. C. Grandeur delusions. D. Nihilistic delusions. Or E. Persecutory delusions. And I will pause again. So here the answer is A, Capgras syndrome, and this is a delusion that a familiar person is replaced by an identical looking stranger. In this case, this woman's husband has been replaced by by someone else. And Fregoli syndrome is a delusion that a familiar person is disguising themselves as strangers. So you may see your husband in members of the public when you're out walking in the street. That would be a uh, Fregoli syndrome. Grander delusions or delusions that suggest that the person has special abilities such as special powers. So if a patient believed they could fly or that they were god like or anything like that that would be um grander delusions nihilistic delusions or delusions of no longer existing or decomposing persecutory delusions or delusions that the patient is being persecuted they may think that they are being harmed by someone or that someone is going to harm them. And this obviously can be very frightening for the patient. Now, question four. A 54-year-old gentleman has ongoing low energy, low mood and low concentration. He used to enjoy going on walks with his wife but now prefer- prefers to be by himself. He finds it difficult to sleep and has lost weight. He has previously tried cognitive behavioural therapy, but has had no success. His medical history includes hypertension and a STEMI, which he had six weeks ago. What is the best drug to commence? So the options here are citalopram, B, A, B, acetyl, acetylpram, can't pronounce that word. Um, C. Fluoxetine. D. Paroxetine. Or E. Sertraline. So again I will pause for a while to allow you to answer the question. So here the answer is E. Sertraline. And this gentleman has depression. We can see that by his low energy, his low mood, loss of pleasure in things he previously would have enjoyed and loss of weight. He has tried cognitive behavioural therapy, which is a treatment for depression. And we now wish to start him on a drug. Now, the best drug to start a patient on is sertraline in those who have had a recent STEMI and that was really what this question was trying to identify that you were aware that sertraline is best for patients after STEMIs. Now question five which is our last question so um, this question concerns a 32 year old man who presents to the clinic demanding a sick note as he doesn't like his new job as a painter. He was sacked from his last job as a window cleaner after turning up to work drunk. 
He has a reckless attitude towards health and safety and shook ladders when other workers were cleaning windows. This led to one worker falling and breaking his wrist. This gentleman shows no remorse for these actions and feels he should not have been sacked. He has a criminal record for hitting his last girlfriend. What is the most likely underlying diagnosis? So the options here are A. Antisocial B. Dependent C. Emotionally unstable D. Paranoid or E. Schizoid And again I will pause for several um, seconds. So here the answer is A. Antisocial And this question relates to personality disorders, which are thought to affect about 10% of the population. And many patients with personality disorders do not seek medical attention. This patient has an antisocial personality disorder, which is more common in men than women. And this personality is associated with a callous disregard for other people's feelings and often associated with criminal records and having very fiery relationships. And we see this man has had no concern or guilt for breaking this man's wrist, and he also has a criminal record. So the options that were also included in this question are B, dependent personality, And I'll just talk through those. So a patient with a dependent personality disorder will have very low confidence and need to be looked after. C, an emotionally unstable patient will be very impulsive and will have fears of abandonment and sudden outbursts. Patients who are emotionally unstable may self-harm or attempt suicide. So... A paranoid personality is characterised by distrust towards family and friends and a schizoid personality is associated with a detachment towards real life. These patients appear indifferent towards other people and often have a very low libido. So this concludes this week's Test Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed the video and please, um, if you did, don't forget to be to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I have another video um, this week, a Fact Friday video. And next week's Test Tuesday video will be on neurology. So please tune in for that. Again, thank you very much. And hope to see you again at my other videos.